Blue 22. Green 19. Green 19. White 90. White 90. Set up. Hey, you guessed it. We're talking cadences, snap counts. How do they do it? Every single level. We're breaking it down, talking about it, how it's a weapon, how offense is used at the highest level, how quarterbacks can potentially get free plays. All sorts of great stuff. Fired up for it. You're going to like this one. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB school. You dig this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I really appreciate the support for the channel. Then, in addition, you want the best stuff, you want longer form stuff, get over to the Patreon community. You want to learn everything you possibly can about RPOs. Hit the link in the description to this video. Check out the RPO course. You can get a membership to the channel. Lots of different ways to support the channel. Fired up for you to enjoy it on different platforms. Thank you for looking into it. I appreciate the support. Now let's dive into it. Snap counts. What are they? How can every team be possibly different? Who does it the best? Who does it similarly? We're diving into it. Very excited about this one on a bunch of different levels. The question comes from Scooter. Hey, JT. I'm going to keep pitching ideas until you eventually make a video about a topic I'm curious about and post it. Snap cadences. I don't know what that is. But I know what you mean. What do they mean? Green 19, green 19, go. Omaha, easy, red, etc. Thanks in advance. Scooter, my man, jackpot. Here we go. Uh, lots to dive into with this thing. First one I'm going to talk about, I think, is probably the most common in the NFL. And you referred to it as, I want to say, blue 22. To me, it's color number, color number. And I uh, got a chance to play for 11 NFL organizations. And one of my kind of biggest things that I always wanted to learn as soon as I got in the building was what was the starter's cadence like? Because everybody in the building who plays quarterback has to basically mirror what the starter's cadence is. And so most NFL teams will have a color number. And I'm not going to speak as an authority here, but I'm going to speak kind of what the anecdotal history of that is in the league for guys who play quarterback. It evolved because that's how audibles were kind of originally, not originally, how they morphed into the game. And so one of those colors would be a live color. So oftentimes you probably hear the same quarterback say the same cadence. Now, most of them like to do it because it rhymes. Blue 22, green, and any teen, right? I used to say green 19, green 18, whatever, green any teen. I also used to love white 90. I used to love white 90 because I grew up as a 49er fan. And I remember Steve Young saying white 90. Why 90? Why 90? Pause and drawing it out to he could see what the defense was doing. So for me, that was what I always used. But most of the teams that you're on, I wouldn't say most, many of the teams I was on used a live number to start some sort of audible. So in the West Coast world, it was often red over, which meant that the play was just flipped over to the other side. So you'd see a quarterback hit their rear end and go red over, red over, said hut. Same thing like that. And so basically I've been on teams that use black, use orange. One of those colors is sometimes live for an audible. So you'd say the color, the live color, that would pique everyone's interest. All of a sudden the next number or phrase that you said would be the audible. And so that's the normal kind of backstory about why most teams use color number, color number. And so that's kind of the original element of it. Now I think you can get into it and show a little bit of personality uh, once you start to kind of draw those things out and you know younger quarterbacks are often a little nervous to voice or project their voice and but it's one of those things that once you learn to master it and use it as an offensive weapon it really does give you an advantage especially to get free plays down the field the other element that I think most people don't quite understand is that the uh, you know in oftentimes in lower levels of football it's like down set hut and they're three distinct sounds well, at the highest level, oftentimes in the NFL, that set hut is basically one word, two syllables. And the offensive line, they're snapping it. The centers are going to snap it early no matter what because they want that kind of cheat step. But And other offensive linemen know what I'm talking about. But this idea being that you say set hut, it's not set hut. It's white 90, white 90, set hut. And it's that rhythmical after the last color number, that set hut needs to come the same cadence all the time so that they get an advantage over the defense. Now you can obviously go on two or on three, but that idea being that that rhythmical kind of 90 set hut, and it's, you can't go wide 90 set hut. 
like, no, that would cause, <laughs> that's a way to piss off a lot of offensive linemen in an NFL huddle. Not a great thing for a young rookie quarterback. So it's understanding the cadence of it, ironically, for a, a cadence or a snap count, and then understanding why most teams say the color number, the color number. The next element that I learned while I was playing that I think, I still think teams do, and it's a great way to do it, is often referred to as a double count. So in the huddle, you would say, you know, either just double count or double whatever. I've had it called a bunch of different things, but let's just say double count. So the idea behind a double count is that it's basically two cadences. The first cadence can go as long as the quarterback wants. The second cadence is on one. So for instance, green 19, green 19 said, hut, 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 hut. White 90, white 90 said, hut. That kind of double count that you see, you know, I remember Favre doing it for years. Aaron has done it for a long time in Green Bay, but many people do it. And it's a free way that if a center sees someone jump, they snap it, you get a free play, you get a shot down the field. It's a great tool. Teams use it on third down all the time. I loved it. Once you master it, you get it put in. And I've used it in NFL Europe, used it at a bunch of different NFL teams. So that double count is kind of one of my favorite things about the snap count, as opposed to going on two or on three, which is a hell of a lot harder, in my opinion, unless you're doing it all the time. And I've never been on a team that really does it well. The other element of going on two or on three that I think is probably pretty well-known secret across most levels of football is anytime you're backed up as an offense, meaning inside the five of your own end zone, so the negative five-yard line, the offense is almost always going to go on two or on a double count because if you jump, what is it? At max, two and a half yards, half the distance of the goal line. So you have all the uh, upside to go on a hard count because nothing, you know, losing half the yardage is usually not that big of a deal at that area, especially if you're like at the one or the half yard line. You're going to go on, you know, you might go on nine to see if they can jump to get any sort of advantage in, in that respect. And so pretty well-known things, the double count, the backed up going on two. I think the other thing that has now two things that have kind of evolved into the kind of popular uh, world of football is the what I consider trigger words. So one word that tells everybody that, hey, we're about to snap the ball. So probably the most famous one is Omaha, Peyton Manning. Everyone can just imagine Omaha. He's out there talking about strawberry shakes. All of a sudden he goes, Omaha. So that, and that one word for wherever you play is that go word to know everybody in the offense to know we're about to snap it. So it can be anything. I was on teams that did Daytona. Daytona said hut. Or Indy said hut. Obviously, you don't have to be a genius to know that you know anything to do with race cars or going fast is probably going to be tethered to that. But this idea being that you can be in the middle of anything. You can be like, green 19, green, easy, easy, easy. You know, easy to kind of let the offensive line know, hey, we're slowing down here. We might check it. We might check it. Okay, we're going to check to whatever. Milkshake right, you know. Restaurant to the left, Daytona said hut, Omaha said hut, you know, and he got famous, Peyton Manning got famous, not got famous, he was already famous, but was famous for saying Omaha because I think in one of the, you know, primetime games, he probably said it almost 50 times in one game and this idea being that, you know, it's just a go, it's a trigger word that many offenses use to be able to, no matter what the cadence is, as a quarterback, sometimes you'll forget what the cadence is. That's, uh, it happens to me all the time and you know, if you're in an offense that has a trigger word, you can always be like, well, what I say? Are we going on three? Omaha said it. And there it is. And so that idea being, and you can also use it as you bleed the clock. You know, if you're a team that gets to play in late, all of a sudden you wanted to go on a double count. There's only four seconds left. Daytona said it. That idea being to be able to get in and out of bad situations. So it's about just giving yourself as many tools as you possibly can for your toolkit to play quarterback at the highest level. The other element that I think is interesting that I want to make sure I talk about because people use it a lot now at lower levels of football is the silent count. And really there are two different types of silent counts and within those two different types of silent counts there are many variations. So the first one I want to talk about is a little bit more league centric and it's under center just because you don't see a whole lot of under center. You know at different levels of football you see a lot more shotgun at lower levels I feel like nowadays. So under center, silent. Okay, I, I know many of you probably you know, are here at this channel for the first time. Some of you are probably long-term, long-time supporters, so I appreciate it. So some of you probably enjoy my stories, I'm going to guess. Others have probably never heard me tell a story, but I have a, a story of silent counts in Seattle. So one of the few games I was fortunate enough to start in the league, we're up in Seattle playing for the Niners, 
And uh, Mike Martz at the time used to call that stadium his North Campus. He was famous. He kept saying it all week in the preparation. I mean, we're going to my North Campus. And it might have been his North Campus when he was with the Rams, but it was not our North Campus. It didn't feel like our North Campus up there. It is loud. And I'm sure it's just as loud now as it ever was. But by far the loudest stadium I've ever been around. And Mike did not believe in having a silent count. We did not have one in the offense. So I'm going up there starting, I want to say, my second game in the league. And uh, after the first series, I think we got a penalty. They couldn't hear me. Uh, I just decided we're going silent in the huddle. And uh, Mike was not a fan of that and basically getting in a huge argument on the sideline. And the essence of it was we're going on silent. Like it's it's one of those filters where he's the main decision maker, but we have to function. I, I can't have five offensive linemen pissed at me every single play when they can't hear me. And literally being in the huddle is, is something like this. If I'm going to call a play, it's – 54 on and you see everybody kind of <laughs> stick their here what huh yeah let's go on silent and so it's it's that type of real-time decision making but that's the reality of it that place is bonkers loud but the idea being that there's a bunch of different ways to do it and that you can do it you can make it the adjustment in the huddle that's what we did and so uh i think probably the most famous one in the league is tom brady he does the old slap on the on the back side Center comes down usually off some sort of center head movement. If you watch quarterback slap, the bottom of the center, hands under, the center usually goes up or down or side to side, and all of a sudden they snap it and they go. And so the offensive line can see that head movement. They know the snap is coming. And so that's the secret to it. I think under center, there's some elements of it, especially like playoff football, cold weather football, hostile environment. you got to be able to do it. The other element that I think is a little bit more prevalent is silent from the gun. Silent from the gun, you often see the foot raise up from the quarterback. You see the hand drop down from the quarterback. I don't think there's one better way than the other. I used to do the foot. The hand thing has become popular. I'm sure someone knows what the benefit of doing one versus the other is. Maybe the defensive line can't see the hand. I don't know. Either way, I don't really care. Silent count from shotgun. Uh, the thing that I always think is interesting is some centers don't like to look through their legs at the snap. They feel like they're at a severe disadvantage. Obviously, one hand between their legs are already at a disadvantage. So oftentimes you'll see teams put their guard to look back at the center. And when the, when the guard gets it, he'll tap the center on the back, and now he's off. And so it's that type of – the procedure of it just needs to be practiced. I don't think there's – I do think that there's better ways to do it. Just the less moving parts is usually the simpler, easier way to do it. But it's fascinating to see that process of it. And so you can even have double counts from silent shotgun. And so there's all sorts of ways to manipulate it to get the offense or to get an advantage on the defense. And so I think you do yourself a disservice if you're not using all those things. But again, it's one of those things that for me, it's about having certain ones that you're comfortable with, being really good at them and using them to your advantage. The double count is probably the key for me. Now, the last one I want to talk about is probably what I consider the best. We obviously do it at our high school. That's why I think it's the best. We go everything on the clap. I'm not giving away any trade secrets here. You could watch one film to know that we do everything on the clap. So we don't have to say a cadence in the huddle. We don't have to talk about cadence. We don't have to do anything. Now we have a bunch of different claps to get around it. You can fake clap it if you're a quarterback. That's the other thing that I like is that the offensive line doesn't know when you're doing fake claps. So you see guys kind of doing this all the time. And then all of a sudden they hit it. But this idea being that you can go on multiple claps, all those things. And so... For me, it's just clean, easy way to do it. We actually had one time last year where a wide receiver was pissed at himself and clapped on the at the line of scrimmage, and that made someone jump. But besides for that, I thought it gave us a great advantage, and I think most teams will do it. I think some old-school coaches uh, have a hard time transitioning into a kind of a new snap count. Now, maybe I'm speaking for them, and many of them have done it, but I think for us, we're one year in. I just We never had a snap count. It was always on the clap and uh, never thought twice about it. So if you're thinking about making the transition, I think it's a good, easy one. But more than that, I think the most important thing is to have a bunch of different tools to be able to use in different times. My favorite one, double count, if you're going to have a vocal snap count. The multiple clap, if you're going to go multiple clap, is a fun one too. But lots of good stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below if you got any other questions. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.